Hello, so now we'll uh, speak about, uh, of course, DNS. DNS is one of the most important services that you have. So without DNS, of course, you cannot access your, your server, you cannot uh, uh, take a workstation and put it in a domain, you cannot, for example, uh, install Exchange, nothing. So DNS is the name resolution solution in Windows 2019, 2016, 20. 12R2, so DNS is very important. So when you install your first DC, it's installed by default, okay? And it's it's used for name resolution. So the first goal of DNS is to um, link to a, a, a computer name, an IP address. But you can also do a reverse. What is a reverse zone? Is the the uh, pointer meaning that f from an IP you can find the uh, computer name and we see we, we talk about PTR okay so PTR is a way that you can have this reverse zone here uh, what are the, the, the components okay so first you have the domain name okay it can be private or public for example fluctuationality.lab is one of my private domain here the DNS server, okay, resolve the name, and if he cannot do it, he will forward it to another DNS server. And in the DNS zone, you will have to manage records. Some records are automatically created, okay? So you can have A, SLV, text, MX, and with a time to link setting, of course. And a zone can be primary or secondary, or it can be integrated in the AD store. And what is very nice is that if you integrate your DNS in the AD, all the replication of the AD will contain the DNS record. So it's more uh, accurate, more modern to integrate it in the AD than to do a primary and secondary. And after you have the DNS resolver, it's the client. And one of the tools we're very known is the NS lookup. NS lookup is very, very known, okay? So first of all, let's see, uh, what 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 is the look of the DNS server? Okay, and see how you you see the name resolution, this reverse zone, and, and and some information about my DNS. Okay, so let's jump here directly on our uh, DC, and this is my DC. Okay, remember we we use it in all the lab. So if I go here directly on my DC, and I just um, connect to my DC. Okay, let's connect to my DC. Okay, folks, and here you have your DHCP, remember? And we are interested about the DNS, okay? And here we can see that we have our DNS name, okay? Fluctuationality.lab. And here inside it, you have all the record, okay? So all this record has been created automatically, okay, by the DHCP. So when do you have a new address? Uh, was um, given by the DHCP, it will do the, re the record directly here. You don't have to do it. Or you can do it, you can create your record, okay? When you when you see static here, okay, static here, it means that all this record has been added manually, okay? Uh, and this one has been added automatically by the DHCP, okay? So uh, uh, you don't have to do anything. And here you have you have your 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 normal okay uh, zone. So for example, I can see I have all my server here, and I can for example ping uh, this name, and he will resolve it with the IP address. Okay, so for example, if we do a ping uh, ping uh, poster two, okay, it's the name of my of, uh, of my one of my workstation. So if I do ping poster two okay he will retrieve okay with the name here and you see that it's exactly the ip address i have here okay so so when you for example take a computer and and it's the first time you put it in the domain he will create a computer account in active directory and also he will retrieve an ip address from the dhcp server you have it here okay and it's here so so that's the goal of the dns okay and if you want to, to have a reverse look zone, you see that I have, I don't have any reverse look zone here. Uh, so I must create one here, okay? So I can go here and do a new zone here. And when you do that, let's see something, yeah. When you do that, you can go here, create a primary reverse zone. 
And when you do an IPv4 uh, reverse zone, when you are here, you can type the uh, ID of my network. So it's this is the ID. You can see it's starting by by um, these two digits because I am in a, in a 24 bytes. Okay, so if I go here, I do next, 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 and finish. And now he has created this reverse zone. Okay, and what is happening is that after, for example, if I take this this uh, this this record here, you can see that I have my PTR. Okay. So I can do update the PTR okay, manually, but after he will do it automatically. If I go back here and if I do a refresh, you will see that you have the PTR. Okay. So what is nice is that if, for example, I run NSLOOKUP, NSLOOKUP, now I can have the two results. If I do that, I have the IP address and he will retrieve me the name of the computer. And now if I type the name of the IP address, I will have the name of the computer. Here is it, okay. And there is nothing with IPv6, okay. The the result the result is only IPv4. You can see it here, okay. Wow, that's good. So this is the reverse zone. After you have the conditional forwarder, this is when you have another domain, for example. And here's the cache lookup, okay. So each time you go on the internet, okay, and you go on, a, on for example come here you have all the website that all my user has access to okay so this is the best way to see what i what what the type of the website that my user is connected to so here we have our uh let's not start this one so here we have our domain here okay so you have this one here all this one here if you see here this is only for to to a computer to find a service for example this is the srv record okay so for example i can see all my site here i can see my domain i can see the global catalog the pdc okay so if i go in my site here I have the default website I have malta here tcp with all the address okay of uh, of my of my dc and that's very nice because that's the way a computer can find your DC uh, when you are connected the first time, when you log in with user and password, he would retry and say, where is my DC, okay? And here you can see that I have all DC by TCP here. So I have two DC here, the first one and the second one. Uh, and this one is used for LDAP, okay? Uh, to find uh, your, 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 your domain controller and Kerberos is for uh, authentication to have a token here. Okay, that's good. So, what you can see also is that if I go here on my, let's close all this. If I go here on my domain, I can see if I go in properties that my uh, data is stored in Active Directory. It's uh, Active Directory integrated, meaning that each time there is a change here in my DNS, he will store all the information in Active Directory, but I can change it if I want. I can deselect that, okay? And the thing is that if I deselect that, the DNS will be a primary zone and the second DNS will be a secondary zone. So it will be done by zone transfer, okay? So it's very known, but the best solution is to store, is to store it in Activatory so that each time you, you uh, change a record, okay? So for example, if I go on my, on my, my zone here so this is my primary zone if i go here and i add a new record it will be automatically uh, synced to the other dc so if i go on my on my let's go here uh, let's go here connect to a dns server and if i tap uh, ad2 okay so here you can see that in ad2 i have exactly the same content okay the same content so each time i add a new record here on my on my on my domain here it will be automatically synced to the other one because uh the uh the ad is replicated so all the ad meaning uh, all what you have in activity so for example uh when i go to my to my uh, user and computer here uh, all what you have here will be replicated automatically okay so each time i create a user here or there is something or new computers here this uh, database will be replicated automatically uh, to the second dc 
Okay, so let's continue our slide here. So DNS admin. First of all, you have admin group, okay? So you have domain admin and enterprise admin or DNS admin, okay? This is the admin group. And you have also DNS logging, okay? So DNS logging is that you have uh, in application and service log folder, and for more variables logging, you can enable debug logging, okay? And you have edging and scavenging. So DNS update record automatically, and sometimes the A record is not removed. For example, if a desktop is improperly disconnected. So state record are dynamic DNS record that has already passed the edging interval. And it's never a good idea to keep state record as they may mess up the name resolution. Wrong name resolution could lead to a bigger incident in the network and that would be a nightmare for the administrator. And the no refresh interval is apparent during which the client does not update the DNS record if there are no change. If the client retains the same IP address, the record is not updated seven days. And the refresh interval is the time span after the no refresh interval when the client can refresh the record. So if the DNS record isn't refreshed during the, this time span, it becomes eligible for scavenging. Now this is important because in your DNS, you must really clean your record, okay? So you see here all the, uh, all the cycle here. This is a very nice picture. And also you must back up the DNS, okay? If you go in system 32 DNS backup, you see that there is backup here. So you can back up a primary zone that is not stored in AD by copying or backing the individual zone, zone DNS, zone name DNS who is here in DNS directory. So for example, if your DNS primary zone is named adatum.com, the DNS file will be named adatum.com DNS by default. And you can use partial DNS CMD, okay, to back up your DNS, or you can do export DNS server zone or DNS CMD zone export, okay, this is for the backup of the DNS. And of course, we have all our record, okay? So the record are created automatically by the DHCP, remember. So one, when the DHCP service starts, every 24 hours, when an IP is changed, when you type register DNS client on your client, or IP configs are registered DNS, okay? So this is a way that the record are created automatically, okay, by the DHCP, remember. And here you have one of the most common DNS record, A record. This is for a computer, this is for IPv4, this is a C name, MX, you have NS, you have pointer record, you have start of authority record, SRV is to find, you know, like a career or so LDAP and text record. Text record is to verify, for example, that you have the, you are the owner of the domain. And here you have some example of some command here you have in PowerShell with the DNS record. Ooh. So what is DNS zone? Remember by default, you are in actually integrated zone, okay? So meaning that all the change, when you do a change, they are, uh, they are you have written copy of the DNS zone. So if I change something on one of my ADs, it will be replicated automatically. So when you create a primary zone, you have the option to create a zone file, okay? Or store the zone in actually. If you create a zone file, then the zone is, is a standard primary zone. If you store it in, in AD, it's integrated. So if you configure zone to be AD integrated, then the zone data is stored in AD and replicated to all domain controller. Okay? So this is the best solution. But of course, you can do zone transfer, okay? With primary and secondary. Let me show you that. So if I go here on my first AD, I can see that my... So if I go in my uh, Windows, so if I go here on Windows System32, okay, so if I go in System32 here, and if I go in my DNS here, you can see that, of course, my zone is integrated in AD. How can I see that? Let's go here and put it, let's take our folder here. Let's just close this one. Let's close this one. And here I have my DNS manager, okay? You will see something very interesting is that if I go here and if I go in properties, if I, if I say, okay, I don't want that my uh, DNS zone is replicated with active integrated. This is quite stupid because it's very powerful, but maybe. So when you do that, what is happening, look what is happening is that when you click on okay, a file will appear here, okay? You will see that. So if I do OK, it will mean no, no longer. So if I do yes, what is happening is that 
if I do uh, apply, <clears throat> you see that I have now my DNS here, zone here. So it's not anymore in the ADE. So if I open it now, if I go here and I do open with my pad, you will see that all the record is in a flat file, okay? When I say flat file, I mean that it's a flat file, like a TXT file, and I just have to uh, open it, open with, and he will, I don't think that I'm gonna do that here, okay? Because he doesn't want to open my file. Okay, so let's go back here, okay? So open with, and if I choose, for example, Notepad, you will see that you have all now your record that are here in a flat file. Okay, so that's mean that now you must find a solution to do a replication between the primary here with the AD. Okay, so now it's a primary zone. If I go here, you will see that now. If I do a property, you will see that now it's the primary primary zone, meaning that. If I want to now to do um, uh, to uh, do a sync of this zone to the to the second VC, I must create, I must go on my on my on my AD2 and I must do a replication. Okay, so meaning that I will have to uh, go on my AD here and to create a second zone. Okay, and the second zone will be secondary zone. So remember that you can do that here, but you must go on the 80 here and you will do manually, time manually, you have to do the synchronization. Okay, so if I go here on my 82, and if I go again on my DNS, and I go here on my on my on my DNS, so I go here tools DNS. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if I go here and I do two, this is my forward loop zone, okay? This is my fluctuation IT that I have, okay? So if I want to create a new, okay, uh, a new zone, I can do a new zone here and secondary zone, okay? So for example, if I go here and I remove this one, okay? So let's re remove it. Okay, that's it. Okay, so now I must manually create a secondary zone. So I will go here, secondary zone. And I type fluctuation it.lab. See? Never do that, okay? Because it's better to do it, you know, because if you say integrated in AD, he will do all the job for you. So I do here. And he will ask me for the uh, primary master. So master is my first AD, okay? So my AD, if I do ping AD, ping AD, it's this one. So let's take a copy of this IP address and put it here. Okay, and it's okay, see, I do next and finish. Now you will see that you have nothing here. Why? Because you must transfer from master. If you do okay here and you wait a little, you will see that in some time, okay, you will have your zone here automatically will be, all the record will be displayed here, okay? Let's wait a minute. If it's not working, you must go on zone transfer, the first one, okay? Let's wait a minute, okay, and that's it. I don't have anything here. If I don't have anything here, what is happening is that I must go back to my AD and manage my zone transfer, okay? So, okay, zone transfer. So I must do a low zone transfer. I can say to any server, okay? But it can be dangerous because if you add a new server, you can transfer all the zone, okay? Or you can say only to the following server. For the meantime, let's say only at 20 server, but the, you must really add the second server here. So let's do Apply, notify, I can notify the AD2, AD2, okay, that's it, and I do OK, and OK. If I go back now to my AD, if I go back to my AD2 now, it will work correctly. I just do that, path and it's work, woohoo! But it's a manual, meaning that all oh, this one is secondary. I cannot change anything, see? That going property is in gray. I cannot change anything here, see? Because it's a secondary, it's a read-only. So remember that, of course, uh, this is a way, but it's not a good way, okay? So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go back here, change, I will do, um, okay, I will go back to my, um, to my 81, 
and I will come back to the first uh, solution. So I mean that I'm going to integrate my my zone here properties, and I'm going to do I can I can change it here if I want, and I can say I want to store it in AD. If I do that here, what is happening is that he will take the file here. Okay, so he will uh, take the, the 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 content of the file, and now I am in AD. Okay, so it's integrated in AD now. So okay, so my first zone is integrated in AD now, so that's better because now all the replication will be done automatically. So uh, and all the DNS record will be integrated in your IDDS database. And this is really wonderful. So you can see it's integrated in AD. If I go back to my AD2 now, okay, so let's do it like this. I can go here, I can go in properties, and you can see that replication, okay? So I can change it if I want, if I want. So I can go here, and I can say, I can say primary zone, okay? Or I can say that it's integrated automatically, okay? So that that's, that's really very, very nice, okay? Cool. And of course I can say, okay, it's integrated in AD, wow, that's fantastic. So now all is integrated in AD and the replication is done directly, okay, by the AD. So meaning that the uh, the, uh, the KCC, KCC is doing the, the, the work and is doing the uh, replication. Zone transfer is a big work, okay, because you must, you know, you must do primary and second and primary and secondary. This is not really a good solution. The best thing is to integrate it directly in AD. So that's what we saw here, okay? So the zone transfer is using the um, EXFR. This is the first time he's taking all the record and he's uh, uh, doing the transfer. And after for the delta, meaning that when you change something uh, between the full one, he will do a AXFR, okay? So it will be just a delta here, okay? So, uh, so, so zone transfer is between primary and secondary. Now, what is DNS forwarding? So when, uh, for example, you don't have, so when a DNS server does not host a primary or secondary zone containing the resource, it needs a mechanism to find the record information. By default, each DNS server is configured with root ints that can be used to resolve DNS requests on the internet, okay? So you have, you can use forwarder, conditional forwarder, or stop zone. So forwarder is very good. So for example, let's say, I want to go on a website, like for example, uh, cnn.com, okay? The thing is that my DNS server doesn't know cnn.com, cnn.com, okay, the news. So he will forward it to a DNS forwarder. If you if you type a DNS forwarder, otherwise he will ask to the root server, okay? So let's go here, let's go back here, and let's go to our AD1, okay? And you can see that here on your on your server here, if you go to properties, you have the forwarder, okay? So by default, he say that if he doesn't find anything, he will send everything to Google, okay? So if you don't put anything here, okay, you can see if there is no forwarder, you can do root ins. What is a root ins? It's all the server here that you have since how many, so, so many years, like we'll do the resolve, okay? So for my main time, I put 80. I know it's not very corporate, but now if I go, for example, and I do uh, like uh, CNN.com, what is happening is that when I will do enter, he will not find the solution, but he will go and forward it to Google, okay? And now I have my CNN.com, okay? And the, the CNN.com will be here. So if I go back here, you will see that in the in the cache lookup here, in the root, so if I go, um, where is it? No, sorry, it's, it's, it's here. Let, let's take it here, sorry. So if I go in cache lookup, root, if I go at .com, I will find CNN.com here. So if I go here, and I look for CNN.com. Uh, it can take some time to put it here. Let's do a small uh, refresh. Okay. And of course, the the uh, the, 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 the IP address of CNN.com uh, will be uh, after um, some time, you will have it, you will find it here. Okay. CNN.com. Okay. So, uh, so, so what is happening is that when I try to go on my CNN.com here, what he will do first is that he will put in the cache here, the IP address of the server of the CNN.com. Okay, so if I do, uh, um, if I do uh, get uh, DNS client cache here, 
you can see that I will have the the cnn.com so here I have the IP address so he will cache it for 133 seconds okay if I do again that you will see that now it's not more 130 but it's one to one okay and for, if I do the same thing boom it will change to 115 so meaning that after that okay if I go again on cnn.com okay on cnn.com what is happening is that if he doesn't find anything here okay he will try to go on my DNS error okay but by default he will let this information here okay so each time I go uh, if I want to find the server if he doesn't find it remember that he will go on my uh, he will go here and he will forward everything here okay you can put DNS or you can put your your ISP okay so your internet provider here this is very very nice Okay, so if I do a refresh here, uh, I have it here, CNN, okay? That's good. So it's, 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 it's here, I have my, my static, okay? So if I go here, I can see uh, my, my time to live here. So I can see uh, minutes, okay? So uh, yeah, I could go here and I can see my time to live here, the IP address. So that's why the resolution is, is if he doesn't find it locally on your computer, he will go and ask it to my CNN here, okay? Okay, cool. So DNS forwarding, okay? You can do forwarder. Conditional forwarder and step zone is used when you have another domain for if you buy a company, for example, you can use step zone or conditional forwarder, okay? So let's finish the last slide here about my ESV record. So its service record is, is when you add a domain controller to a domain, the domain controller advertises its services by creating SRV record. So its name as locator record in DNS. So unlike host A resource record, which map host name to IP address, SRV record maps services to host name. For example, to publish its ability to provide authentication and delivery access, a domain controller register Kerberos v5 protocol and LDAP SRV record. And SRV records are dynamically registered by the net login. Services running on a domain controller. If you need to force a domain controller to recreate its SRV record, you can restart the net login services or restart the domain controller. Ooh, that's good. Okay, let's finish with the DNS policy and DNS sec. Okay, what is DNS policy? DNS policies, you can use DNS policy to manipulate how a DNS server manage query based on different factors. As an example, you might create a DNS policy to respond to query asking for the IP address of a web server to respond for a different IP address based on the closet that is sent to the cloud. Woo, that's, I love it. So you will use PowerShell to create DNS policy. Okay, DNS policy is very nice. We'll not cover that in this training, but it's something that it's very, very powerful. And DNSSEC is to do encryption, of course, uh, of all your DNS because it can be a big problem if you have an attack, okay? So if, if malicious attacks can alter response from DNS server or send spoofed response to, to point client computer to their own server, they can get access to information. So if I do a phishing, I can change it if I want. So any server that relies on DNS for the initial connection, such as e-commerce web server and email server is vulnerable. So domain DNS sec can protect clients that are making DNS query from accepting full DNS response, okay? So how does it work? I can go here on my AD if I want, and I can go here and do something quite crazy is sign the zone here. So I can do next, 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 next. I can add a, a key here. I can do next, next. I can add this uh, ZS key, ZSK. And I do next, 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 next. So of course you must understand everything. <laughs> and if I go here, look what's happening now is all is encrypted. Ooh, that's crazy. So all my computer cannot access DNS anymore. I must push by policy the way to encrypt the DNS. Okay. So that's good. So let's now <laughs> inside the zone because we'll not be able to, to, to do anything in our lab. Okay. And that's it. So this is quite amazing how powerful it's to be able to sign the zone, okay? So this is the uh, the DNSSEC, okay? Okay, so I think that, you know, we saw quite a lot of things on DNS. We can pass a lot of time on it, but remember that that uh, the most important in the training is to understand what is doing what is doing your DNS server and what is a DNS 
client. Remember that also uh, when you have your DHCP here, your DHCP will automatically send to all your workstation the DNS server. Okay, why? Because you need it. If I go, for example, on my on my uh, second workstation here, so if I go here inside, when I do here, when I when I type, you know, my password, he will contact my DNS server. Okay, why? Because he must uh, check that my password and my username is in Active Directory. Okay, so up, up. let's change my up. come on. <laughs> let's change my pad my my keyboard here. Okay, and that's good. And so, for example, if I go here in my workstation, and for example, if I type the app, the, the, the name of a server, like for example, uh, AD2, he will find it. Why? Because he's doing a DNS request. So he will try to say, okay, please, I want to access to AD2. So he will all the time try to use his local cache, okay? So you remember that to, to display the local cache here, you go on your PowerShell here, and you can do a get uh, DNS client cache. If you do that, you will have maybe here the name and the IP address of your server AD2. Okay, so here you have your your old information about you know AD, and he will use try to use the the DNS cache here. So I have my here my cache here. So meaning that after that, if he doesn't find anything here, so if I don't have any any entry here, he will go on your DNS server to say, hey, guy, can you give me the IP address of AD2? And, and, and after he will put it on your cache for 173 seconds, okay? So, and it's very important to understand is that when you take a, 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 a computer and you put it on a domain, so when you go here and you know, when you take a workstation and you put it on a domain, he's on the domain, what is happening is that automatically uh, he will ask, where is my DNS server? And he will put this, this workstation on my domain here, okay? And he will create automatically the IP address, the HTTP will give an IP address, the IP address will be saved in DNS, and he will create all the object in Active Directory. That's all, folks, for the meantime. <laughs> Thank you so much, and have a very nice day. Ciao, ciao.